Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, July 16th, 2024, and um, this is the hearing for the month of July uh, for the City of Tempe Hearing Officer. My name is Vanessa McDonald. I'm calling the meeting to order. Um, we have a brief agenda this afternoon, but I do need to read something um, into the record before we jump into our agenda. The City of Tempe Hearing Officer is authorized by Arizona Revised Statutes and the City of Tempe Zoning and Development Code. The hearing officer is granted the authority to conduct public hearings to decide upon the abatement of code violations occurring on properties within the city. These violations include deteriorated pools, structures, or landscaping, storage of junk or refuse, and inoperable or unregistered vehicles. Abatement actions are brought before the hearing officer by the city's code compliance division, typically after numerous attempts at contacting the property owner to obtain voluntary compliance with the code. The hearing officer may issue an order directing the owner, occupant, property manager, or other responsible person to remediate a code violation or authorize the city to abate the property to correct the violation. The cost of the abatement is the responsibility of the owner of the property where the violation occurred and will be collected as an assessment against the property in violation of the code. On today's agenda, we have three items. We have a set of minutes from June 18th, 2024, and two property abatements. Um, agenda item number four, previously published um, on the agenda, has been brought into compliance by the owner, so has been withdrawn by code compliance. Any property owner who is aggrieved by a decision of the hearing officer may file an appeal within 14 calendar days after the hearing officer has made a decision. The deadline for appealing any decision rendered today is 3 p.m. on July 30th, 2024. Appeals are heard by the Board of Adjustment, after which they may also be appealed to the Superior Court. A property owner has 14 days after the hearing officer's decision to either file an appeal or bring the property into code compliance. If an appeal isn't filed or the property isn't brought into compliance within the required 14-day time frame, the property will be abated by the city. Joining me this afternoon uh, to my left are Cassidy Hernandez and Sean DeFara from the city's community <coughs> development department. Thanks for being here, you guys, and for setting this up today. Uh, first item on our agenda this afternoon is a set of minutes from the hearing on June 18th, 2024. I, I had a chance to review those minutes when they were sent to me by Cassidy um, after the hearing, and I believe that they accurately reflect what took place at that hearing. So I'm going to go ahead and approve the minutes of June 18th, 2024. The next item on the agenda is a request for approval to abate public nuisance items at the 325 SHD LLC property located at 325 South Hardy Drive. The applicant is the City of Tempe, represented this afternoon by Code Inspector Michelle Van Etten. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Madam Hearing Officer. Uh, my name is Michelle Van Etten. I'm a Code Inspector here with the City of Tempe. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm here to request a 180-day open abatement to remedy grass and weeds at a vacant lot at 325 South Hardy Drive here in Tempe, 85281. I initiated this case on March 1st of this year when I saw grass and weeds uh, in the vacant lot. Being a dirt lot, it, it should be maintained free of all grass and weeds, and it was not. I sent a notice of correction to the property owner based on information that I got from the Maricopa County Assessor's site okay. and the Arizona Corporation Commission website. Um, I then re-inspected about two weeks later on March 15th, found that the violation uh, still had not been corrected, and I sent a final notice to the same addresses. Unfortunately, all of the notices were later returned by the US Postal Service saying that the addresses were invalid, owner mm. not known. Uh, I also tried to contact the owner via an email address that I found in the Arizona Corporate Commission or Corporation Commission right. website that came back as being an invalid email as well. Um, this property has been abated twice before in the last few years. Uh, the last time being my case almost uh, a year ago to the day. Um, at that time, I did issue one citation. That citation, along with all of the notices, were returned. I went to collections, was never satisfied in the courts. 
I checked the court uh, website today and it showed um, a notation similar to no valid address is found. So uh, I've exhausted all the resources they have um, and at this point I feel the only way to take care of the violation is for the city to intervene and uh, abate. I went out this morning uh, inspected the property, found that it is still in violation. I took pictures to show you. Oh, that'd if be I great. may show you now. Thank you. All right, there we go. So this is, um, I took this picture standing on Hardy, looking at the south side of the lot. It butts right up to this uh, townhouse here, uh, duplex. Um, you can see the grass and weeds are almost as tall as the six foot fence there in that area. It does butt right up to the property line, so that is something that that neighbor has to, to see every day. This is the north side of the lot. Again, grass and weeds all along uh, the wall. This is, I took this picture standing on uh, the sidewalk along Hardy facing east to, sh uh, to show that it is a dirt lot, should be free of grass and weeds. There's grass and weeds throughout. And then my final picture is, again, it's the south side along the property. Just gives you a better idea of just how tall and how full uh, the weeds are there along there. And it's right up against the property line. So the people that live there, that's what they see when yeah. they come in and out of their property So it's gotten worse day. significantly since the photos in the packet, which were May yes, 13th. Madam Hearing so within, Officer, they have. in two months, it's not gotten better. Yeah. <laughs> so again, Madam Hearing Officer, I'm asking for a 180-day open abatement to take care of these grass and weeds at 325 South Hardy Drive, Tempe, 85281. Great. Thank you. Um, I'll ask Mr. Defar, is anyone on the line wanting to talk about this agenda item? Madam Hearing Officer, no one online. Great, thank you. Is there anyone here, a member of the public, who wants to speak on agenda item number two, the property at 325 South Hardy? No, I don't believe so. Um, so, well, the photos speak for themselves, right? And with an inability to contact the property owner to obtain voluntary compliance, I mean, it does need to be cleaned up and the weeds need to go away. And it's just such a curious thing. The Corporation Commission, all the public records that you would normally go to to attempt to contact a property owner um, aren't working. But the taxes are paid. Did Apparently, you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so interesting. So um, that's neither here nor there. But um, I'll go ahead and, and you asked for 180 days? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to grant your 180 day open abatement um, for the property located at 325 South Hardy Drive contained in case CM 240510. Thank you. Have a good evening. <clears throat> The next item on our agenda is ag agenda item number three. This is a request to abate public nuisance items at the Jordan property located at 1930 East Minton Drive. The applicant is the City of Tempe Code Compliance represented this afternoon by John Salazar. Yes, ma'am. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Hearing Officer. My name is John Salazar. I'm a Code and Compliance Inspector with the City of Tempe Code Compliance Division. I'm here this evening to request a 180-day open abatement for the properly located at 1930 East Minton Drive, Tempe, Arizona, 85282, which is in the jurisdiction of this court. Uh, this case was originally initiated back in October of 22, Madam Hearing Officer, for violations of City Code 21-3B1, filthy litter, debris, or trash covered exterior areas, 21-3B4 to permit outside of any single family or multifamily dwelling or accessory building any camper vehicle or parts thereof and city code 213 b.8 uncultivated weeds in the gravel landscape or lawn higher than 12 inches um, this property has had multiple public complaints and we have previously abated this property three different times first time on march 8th of 23rd of 2023 excuse me june 1st of 2023 and then again on 118 of 24 um, and then we've also the owner has received numerous citations as well I was assigned to this case on June 11th of this year and checked the property, which was still in violation. On June 14th, 24, I mailed a final correction notice to the homeowner for current violations, 21-3B.1. Again, filthy litter, debris, or trash covered exterior areas, 
uh, City Code 21.3, B.3, an unregistered vehicle outside or under a roof area not enclosed. And City Code 21.3, B.16, swimming pool that is deteriorated or presents a health hazard. I also mailed an intent to abate on June 14th and also posted a copy to the address the same day. I have had contact with the owner, Aaron Jordan, one time via telephone on June 26th. Uh, Mr. Jordan advised he received my last violation notices and was attempting to bring the property into compliance. On July 2nd, I checked the property again and noticed all the violations still existed. On today's date, July 16, 2024, I checked the property and verified the pool was brought into compliance, but the other violations still exist. I obtained photographs of those current violations. I would like to now present those if Thank I may. Thank you. Here's just a photo of the front of the residence, which has the address right there on the middle pillar. Mm -hmm. This is a photo of the left side of the house facing west, where you can see there's a culmination of different items, some household items, but you can, uh, you can see in there there's some items that are considered junk, trash, debris. Here's another photo of that same area of the west side of the house where you can kind of pan out a little bit more where you can see different items in the planters and everything else. And there's a little white bag of trash there as well, which we consider junk, trash, and debris. Here's a little zoomed in version of that area with the trash bag and some other items of debris in that area as well. Here's a picture of the front of the house facing where you can see some items in the rocks, some debris spread out all out through the uh, driveway and a little bit on the side there. Here's a picture of the actual trailer that's on the side. Um, and registered. registered? Yes, ma'am. It is registered, Correct. okay. Well, we don't know if that it's unregistered. Our plan is to check if we get the abatement once okay. we're there. Here is a picture of the porch or front patio area. As you can see throughout the photo, there's all kinds of different, as we consider junk trash debris in there as well. And this is visible from the neighbor's view as well. Okay, and so what I'm looking at on the left, the fabric things, those are the fabric panels Correct. that you see from the front of the yes, house. Yes, ma'am, correct. Okay, in an attempt to obscure the Correct, the yes, ma'am. Okay. But this is the open area on the side that's right. visible from the side, that's yes, ma'am. Uh, as we move to the backyard, as you can see, this is a photo facing north. Um, as you can look through the area, there's a bunch of junk trash debris on the floor here and mixed out throughout all these trash cans here and all over the floor spread out throughout the backyard. Thank you. And here's another side view of that area just showing the amount of collection of junk trash debris. As you can see on the floor here, there's more junk trash debris that's spread out all throughout the backyard. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. As I stated before, ma'am, uh, Madam Hearing Officer, I'm seeking a 180-day open abatement for the property located at 1930 East Minton Drive in Arizona, 85282. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll ask Mr. DeFara first. Is there anyone on the line wanting to talk about this agenda item? Madam Hearing Officer, no one online. Thank you. I have been given a white speaker card. I have the property owner, um, Aaron Jordan, um, who is here and wanting to speak on the case. Mr. Jordan, would you like to come up, please? <clears throat> and again, just for the record, if you can state um, your name and address. Yes, it's Aaron Jordan, 1930 East Minton Drive, Tempe, Arizona, 85282. Okay. Thank you. Well, you heard the presentation made by staff, yes. and so I'd like to hear your version of things. Um, as uh, Mr. Salazar mentioned, um, this case originally goes back to October of 2022. Yes. Yes. So it's been quite a while. Um, I have five pages of notifications and attempts at communication and inspections and repeat inspections. I don't want to go through those right. date by date, um, but it's just, it's a lengthy yes. history. 
It's been quite, it's been a process. Um, it's kind of, it's been tough. Um, we inherited property from my fiance's father that passed okay. away. Um, a massive amount of stuff. We've been trying to go through it and get rid of stuff. Um, like you said, we've had this meeting before a few times. They've been out a few times for the abatement. Um, I have a lien on my house because of it. I'm trying to stay on top of stuff. Uh, I work healthcare. I work night shift, and I do travel work. Um, the RV on the side of the house, I use that for travel work. A lot of the stuff, you know, is confusing at first, knowing the code and trying to keep up with everything and knowing what you can do and what you can't do. Um, I ran into that confusion with the trailer. Uh, I had it on the street. They didn't like that. The police came and told me to move it to the property. So it's kind of, I'm juggling a little bit. Um, but I did speak with um, previous code enforcement officers and the code that I know uh, is 21 feet from the sidewalk, um, the property line. You have to have it behind that. And I do have that. I've measured that out. I do have it in the right location. Um, I was planning on putting up some fence panels on the side so it doesn't bother the neighbor since it's so close to her property line. And it's going to go soon anyways. But it is registered. Uh, that is my vehicle. Um, so yes, it is registered. And I'm using it for travel work. I get an assignment somewhere. I take it out there. I find an RV lot. I park it. Um, and then I kind of come back and forth to see family. Okay. So that's taken care of. Um, the pool has been a battle. Uh, I've dealt with this with code quite a few times. Um, it greens up. A storm comes, the algae oh, comes. Yeah. The algae is just persistent. I've never had a saltwater pool before. This is the first saltwater pool, so managing it and balancing everything, it's been kind of tricky because I just kind of started throwing stuff in and hoping, hope, hoping it would take, and it doesn't take. A storm comes, you get one piece of algae, and boom, it's green. So I, I'm on top of it. The pool is clear, looks good. I've got all the chemicals, all the stuff, the test strips, everything I need to keep it that way. Um, it's summertime. It's nice to have the pool. We don't want it green. So we've got that taken care of. Um, as far as the litter, trash, and debris, that's been kind of an ongoing, that's been the ongoing problem. Um, I was a new property owner. I didn't think about it. I'm so busy, everything going on, working night shift, trying to juggle everything. I didn't realize codes, and obviously some of the pictures that I saw, I took back, and I was like, whoa, that's kind of rough. Yeah. You don't, I didn't realize, you know, I had a tarp out front on the carport with furniture covered. My fiance likes to redo furniture and paint it and, and turn it around and sell it on offer up. Um, it's kind of a hobby of hers and she okay. makes a little cash on the side. But we understand that we have to have a space and that we can't just sprawl it all out all over the place. Correct. Um, so we're getting a handle on that. That's been kind of a challenge because we have all this stuff from her father that passed away and we're trying to go through that and get stuff to family members that deserve to have the stuff that they that is theirs basically. I put up storage sheds. I put up three big storage, decent sized storage sheds. Um, so we're keeping stuff in there, but I also have storage units that I have been emptying out so I can take stuff from the property back over to the storage units. So it's just a process and it's a thousand degrees outside right now. It's very difficult to work during the daytime or anything to get anything done. Um, and I, I mean, I don't know resources. resources. I don't have resources to go to that can help me. Um, we've had multiple dumpsters brought out and left on the property. I can't get a dumpster um, until later in this week. So I've been fighting a time crunch too, sure. as far as getting stuff done. Um, we're working on it though. We're working very hard. The drop cloths that I have hanging in the front, mm -hmm. it's my makeshift garage door, I would say. Um, it's not the prettiest thing right now, but it keeps the site out from everybody. It's not too bad underneath it. I've been organizing that too. I've found on Amazon, they make thermal kind of covers that look nice. And I was thinking about putting one of those up to just kind of close the area off kind of thing. Well, I think the key with that cover is it's still um, visible from the side. Right. From, and it's a neighbor right, that you right, have right, right. next door. So, so, I mean, we, we're on top of everything. I rushed in here to even make the meeting. I didn't even think I was going to make the meeting today, but my shift, I, you know, I work yeah. night shift. I'm, I'm all over the place. So I'm doing the best that I can. Um, I've even taken into consideration of selling the house and I would bring in a crew to clean it up to be able to do that. Cause obviously I can't sell the house right. if it looks the way it is, I'm going to lose a lot in value. 
Um, and plus there's the lien on my house, which for code compliance, I've, they're going to want their money at some point. Sure. Um, so upon the sale sell, of the home. Sell, right, yeah. right. So selling the house would help me take care of that debt. So those are things I'm working on and taking into consideration. Like I said, I travel, so I may, I've been thinking about going to a small town in a different state somewhere. So we're just balancing everything. You know, we have, we have multiple kids at the house, so it's hard to keep up on all the kid stuff that's around. Right. Um, following them around, picking up every piece of trash that they just want to throw in the yard. I'm chasing them all day long. Um, but we have bikes and apparently the neighbors don't like the bikes. And well, we have six people in the house, you know, and everybody wants to ride a bike. So we have a rack, we try to keep it at the rack, but sometimes they get a little scattered. And I think code enforcement is pretty sensitive to the fact that like, there are things that families need, right, you know, right. you, the, b bicycles are fine. That's right. not considered just or trash, junk, and debris. A playhouse like what you have in the front yard, that's for the kids. Right, you know, no right. one's wanting to take those things away, but right. it's the the other, you know, five gallon buckets that are dirty and the, you know, large trash cans. And those are the things right. that are, no one wants to inherit those. No one, you know, those are the things. Right. And they have a really good eye for discerning you know, what is good and what's acceptable on a property and what just contributes right. to a deteriorated look of the overall property. And we've been trying to keep mind of that, you know, and not let stuff build up or unnecessary stuff be out there. Um, my wife likes to garden, and so she's working on the gardening area. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ultimate goal is to make it look beautiful and nice, you know. So the front porch, we put up the picket fence around it. Um, we have a two-year-old child, and that was going to be a little play area for him. So we've just got so much stacked against us right now and so little resources to turn to that it's hard to get everything at once, and it just snowballs on you right. sometimes. So I'm going to have to bring in some professional people to do it. Um, coming here today, I, I knew, I mean, I talked to Mr. Salazar on the phone. I did talk to him the one time. Mm -hmm. I Sorry, I meant to follow up with you to get some more information. I was having a hard time getting a dumpster. Um, I, I actually have a friend that has a dumpster company, um, so he's really good at not sweating me to come and get it right away, so he gives me some time to work on it, um, but he doesn't have any right now. So coming here today, I knew, I mean, the property... It needs some work right now. Like, it still needs work. I think we're all in agreement. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'll take I mean, I'll take one step forward, and then I get hit with two steps backwards right. on it. Um, a storm will hit or something, and, you know, then I'm back to square one. So I really feel like I'm at the point of getting on, like, turning the curve with it at this point. Um, coming here today, I was hoping to possibly request an extension, possibly to your guys' next meeting. Um, to give me a couple, maybe possibly a couple more weeks to get the dumpster in. Um, bulk pickup is coming right now, I mean, but uh, so we have to have a dumpster to be able to get some of this stuff out. Um, I have a battle plan and I just was hoping maybe I could get some leniency and maybe you guys could extend me a little bit. Well, so. here's the good thing about this process. You weren't, you walked in late. I noticed when you walked in and I read a preamble for this hearing, every hearing, right. and it's for this reason. And it, it explains how the process works. The decision that I rendered today, there's a two week window after today during which um, you can bring the property into code compliance right. and work with the inspector and determine what's acceptable and what constitutes satisfactory progress right. towards compliance. Right, right. And that's so, what I was hoping to do with Mr. Salazar before, but we just, we ran out of time and, you know, I, yeah. did, I was supposed to call him back so he could take a peek at it. I knew he was going to come take the pictures. I knew it was coming. And I just ran out of time, so. So I hope you appreciate that when I look at a case like this, that's almost a year and a half worth of contacts and right. inspections and right. inaction or just tiny little baby steps, I still am inclined to give him the abatement tool. And so that will allow him to help you during the next two weeks. But at the end of the day, if there isn't satisfactory progress in two weeks, he will abate the property. Right, right. Um, it sounds like you want to try and avoid that because there's other costs associated with that, and that goes on to another lien on the property. But I hope that that will keep you motivated to stay on the path that oh, you well, say yeah. you've been yeah. been on the in the most recent path. Right, right. And that's kind of what I figured, but I wanted to kind of 
at least show that, you know, I'm working on it. You're working on it. You're concerned. I appreciate that. I appreciate your being here today and so understanding. I, can I ask a question? So the sure. abatement process, uh, we've been through it before. Um, it goes for 180 days. Mm -hmm. I have concerns with some of my neighbors that don't necessarily like anything that happens. And some of them, it gets to the point where we feel like we're being targeted. Um, and we've had code compliance show up. I mean, I've had a neighbor show up, pull up home, look over at the yard, and next thing you know, code compliance shows up five minutes later. So it's almost like my neighbor has code compliance on speed dial. And it's some of the things are concerning, not with Mr. Salazar. I haven't run into any of that with Mr. Salazar so far. But I had my neighbor next door report that there was city of Tempe out with flashlights looking over my property wall at 3 a.m. in the morning. And that's kind of the things that concern me. And, you know, my backyard, I understand if I have stuff that's high up sticking over the wall um, and everybody can see, the neighbors can see. But, you know, like I feel like in my backyard, I am I should have a certain level of privacy. And, you, you know, I got people peeking over the backyard and looking over the backyard with flashlights. And that's what concerns me. So the 180 day abatement process, if I go into that, whether I have the two week grace period or not, I have a half a year to where I'm on pins and needles with my neighbors. Cause if I leave one thing out of place, they're going to call code compliance and they're going to be the next day. They're the next day ticketing me. That's what my concern is. It's like I'm being targeted. So, I don't know what to, that's, that's my fear. We have kids and the kids are scared to leave their bikes outside because code compliance is going to come by and do their thing all over again. So there's a certain level of fear they're being put in. I mean, we're walking on eggshells. Even when things are going in the right direction and we feel like we're making progress, we feel like we can't turn our back without code compliance being there. Well, not like I said Mr. Before, Salazar, nobody because wants, so far he's been doing, he's been working with me. So Nobody wants to take your bikes. Nobody wants to take anything that is useful to you, useful well, to the children. That. I mean, and I don't, honestly, I don't believe that anyone is there at 3 a.m. from code compliance because they work a normal working day. They don't want to be working any longer <laughs> than they have to do. And this is Certainly what my neighbor overnight. said. I don't know exactly what she saw because I wasn't awake and I didn't see it. I don't know, I don't know what it was. So, but something. she... She said she saw a city of Tempe um, truck, but I don't know. Yeah, I could have been a power issue. There's a number of right, reasons right. why, you know, water, sewer, power, something like that. Yeah. But um, in any event, thank you for coming. I appreciate your input. Hey. Um, I am going to grant the 180-day open abatement request. And really, like, if you do what you say you're going to do, right. if you take the next couple of weeks, you get the dumpsters, you make a concerted effort to bring the property into conformance with the code. Right. We're reasonable people. Mr. Salazar, as you said, he will work with you. He'll listen to you. You know, he okay. will help you get there. Okay. But um, nevertheless, I still want to give him the tool that he needs okay. um, and that we've been working on for now a year and a half. And that's fine. Like property. I said, I want to be here so you know that I'm trying to make progress on it. I Thank just you. I appreciate it. There, so. sure. Appreciate it. Thank you very Thank much. You. So um, no other member of the public, I believe, is here to talk about this agenda item. So as I mentioned previously, I'm going to request or approve the request to abate the public nuisance items at the Jordan property at 1930 East Minton Drive, contained in application CE226242. Thank you very much. I see he left already. <laughs> so that concludes our agenda for this afternoon. Um, do you have any announcements, Mr. DeFara? Yeah. Madam Hearing Officer, our next hearing officer is scheduled for Tuesday, August 6th at 5 p.m., also available live on Tempe 11. Great. Thank you.